Hello, um, guys. You're welcome to um, the last part one um, lesson on partial fraction decompositions. So we've looked at three cases already. Um, the final case will be what I call case four. Um, and, and notice that in case four you have um, a function polynomial up here, and the denominator here has a, a quadratic which is irreducible and it is repeated in this case it is squared right and so we're going to use, we are going to use the approach that we use for case two right in the case of um, linear factors with repeated um, factors similar approach is going to be applied here okay and notice also that the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator right this has degree five this is x squared raised to the power 2 is x to the power 4 times this will give you x to the power 5. That is important. In the next example, where we look at impartial fractions, right, you have to make sure that this, uh, this is uh, the degree of the numerator is always less than that of the denominator. Otherwise, you have to use long division. Okay, so in this case, since x is linear, we uh, write this as some constant over x. This is a quadratic and it's irreducible, so we write this as sum dx plus c all over x squared plus 1. Plus, because it's squared, we need a dx plus e all over x squared plus 1, all of this squared. Okay? So this is important. So once we get this, um, the plan then is to solve for a, b, c, d, and e as we've done before. So multiply throughout by this um, denominator, right? If I multiply this by that, I'm going to get x raised to the power 4, x to the power 3, x squared minus x plus 1 is equal to this denominator is going to multiply that. This will cancel out this. So I'm going to have a into x squared plus 1 squared plus I multiply this by this, I'm going to have bx plus c, all right? I'll have x, this x. One of these will cancel out, so I have x squared plus 1, okay? Then when I get here, this will cancel out, and so I'm going to have d, I'll have dx plus e. This is going to multiply x. Okay. And the plan now is to use the approach where we expand this uh, and compare coefficients. Okay. So I'm going to rewrite this as, so let me shift here. I'm going to square this out. This will give me x to the power 4, 2x squared plus 1, right? This is dx plus c. It multiplies this, x to the power 3 and x. And this gives me dx squared plus dx. Okay? Good. So, we're going to expand and then group like terms. So, I'm going to have ax to the power 4 plus 2ax squared plus a plus b. This multiplies that dx raised to the power 4 dx squared. This and this gives me c x to the power 3. And then I have c x. And then we have b x squared plus b x. Okay? Good. So now let's group all the like terms. The x to the power 4 terms. I'm going to have a plus b. I have x raised to the power 4, this and that. Let's do the cubic terms. I have x to the power 3 here. That's the only one. So I have plus c. Then you have x raised to the power 3. Let's do the square terms. I have this guy. I have this and I have that. So I have 2a plus b plus b x squared. Then the x terms, x terms, 
I have this and that. So I have C plus D e and then S. And then the constant term is just A. So I have A here. Okay? Good. So now what we do is we compare the equations. We are going to compare the right hand side to this left hand side, to this guy. Okay? If you notice, the constant here matches this. So we have A, right? So I'm going to write here. So straight away we know that A is equal to 1 if you compare coefficients. It's easy to do this one as well since we already know A, right? If you compare the, x, the coefficient of x to the power 4, it is 1. So a plus b must be equal to 1. So a plus b is equal to 1. But a is 1, right? Which means that b is equal to 0. So b is 0 and a is 1. Good. We can also compare the cubic terms c, x cubed, and x cubed. x cubed has a coefficient of 1, so c is equal to 1. So c, right? So here, we are comparing the constant terms. Here, we compare the x and the power 4 terms. Here, we are comparing the x cubed terms, and that c is equal to 1. All right? OK, good. And then, we can compare the x squared terms, the coefficient of 1 which means 2a plus b plus d is equal to 1, okay? 2, so compare the x squared times 2a plus b plus d is equal to 1, okay? We know what a is. a is 1, so this is 2. This is 0, right? So 2 plus d is equal to 1. 2 plus d is 1. So D is equal to negative 1. So that gives us D, negative 1. Okay. And then the last one will be this one. C plus E must be equal to the equation of X, which is negative 1. Right? So let's do this. So we know that C plus E must be equal to negative 1. We know C is 1. All right? So E will be equal to negative 2. Negative 2. So we know this. All right? Good. That's it. We know A, B, C, D, and E. We go back here and plug them in. So we come back. We come back here. I'm just going to write it here. We know what A is. So A is 1. So I have it here. B is 0, so this vanishes. And C is 1, so the top becomes 1. So this is 1. D is negative 1 and E is negative 2. So we have negative here and negative 2. Negative and negative 2. So if you break this, you compose this into partial fractions you're going to get 1 over x plus 1 over x squared plus 1 plus negative x minus 2 all over x squared plus 1 all squared. And that is the partial functions. All right? Good. So you can try it yourself. This is um, what I'll do. In the next one, I'm going to finish off and look at cases where you have impartial, uh, sorry, where you have um, um, partial fractions where the degree of the numerator, okay? is greater than the degree of the denominator. Okay.